It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Today I'm gonna respond to a video by Black Lives Matter activists who complain about the most trivial thing imaginable. With cities across America burning and black communities in pain, many white people have continued posting selfies and pictures of food on social media as if nothing is wrong, and it's not gonna go unnoticed. We're not even starting the video, and already it has some sort of false assumption. It's not just white people that post pictures of food on social media, it's pretty much anybody that has some sort of social media account. So it does not matter if they're black, if they're white, or whatever. Anybody with a cell phone or computer posts pictures online of food, regardless of the race and circumstances. And also, before I start to respond to the video, I first want to state that I'm not going to respond to the entire video because it's like six minutes long. So if you guys want to see the entire video, you can see it in the link in the description box down below. I'm going to respond to the bullet points in the video. That way, it would actually not be as tedious for you guys, for me. Morning, a friend of mine, you know, posted something without posting anything about uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter. It's incredibly hurtful. It's incredibly hurtful, particularly to people that I considered friends. While I would otherwise love to read your favorite banana bread recipe, it is necessary for me to, to have people, especially influencers, especially celebrities, to acknowledge that pain. Like if you were standing in a fire, you're in pain, and you have someone who's sitting three feet away who's not on fire, who's refusing to acknowledge your pain and is twirling around with banana bread. It's the same thing. I find it so funny how they're portraying themselves as some sort of underdog for this whole entire Black Lives Matter movement, when in fact, Black Lives Matter is pretty much the mainstream stuff that we see every day. The majority of companies support Black Lives Matter. They're actually donating money for Black Lives Matter. Of course, celebrities have bailed people who support Black Lives Matter out of jail. And of course, there are many YouTubers who support Black Lives Matter. There are many stream persons that support Black Lives Matter. So how much more vindication do you really need? Black Lives Matter is pretty much the mainstream opinion. And to say that you're like some sort of underdog because no one is actually talking about it every single day, every single second, every single minute on social media just because they post some sort of food pic is quite sad and pathetic. It's pathetic because not everybody, of course, is living in the United States. There are people across the world dealing with their own sort of problems every single day and so not everything is gonna revolve around the United States. And so naturally, of course, the people outside of our country, they can post about whatever they want to without any problem, without any hesitation. So not every single thing around, like evolves around us because obviously America is not the center of the whole entire world. If something extremely personal happens to you, I wouldn't be able to post about Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and then in the midst of that, I'm posting about things that are lighthearted and happy and completely unrelated. You're absolutely right. Let's make sure that everybody, like everybody, had to be just as miserable as you are. And matter of fact, I'm definitely gonna think about politics 24 seven because obviously every single last thing must be political. The games I play must be political. The books I read are must be like political, obviously. All the stuff that I do, putting on shoes is political. Everything to do like with bike riding is political. So it's so strange and so sad that you cannot turn off your brain for politics. Because if you don't think about, of course, like politics all the time, that's pretty good. It's actually healthy for not to think about politics all the time. Because honestly, if I thought about politics all the time, I'd probably go mad because obviously the world is a very fucked up place. Still, 
I cannot just, you know, think about all that bad stuff going on. It's totally possible to care about those issues, but also turn off your brain. White silence is incredibly powerful. It's not neutral. It acts like a weapon. It's not even silent. Like, it, it speaks volumes, right? And the people of color who are around a silent white person, um, they hear the silence and they feel what it means. I'm not sure if we're living in some sort of alternate universes, but there is, like, no white silence on this whole issue. We've seen plenty of white celebrities condemning the whole entire police brutality stuff. We've seen, of course, like all these YouTubers who are white supporting Black Lives Matter. We've seen like a ton of protests of white people with like the black people against police brutality. So what kind of silence are you talking about? There are plenty of white people who support you. There's entire corporations who probably have white people as their CEOs who also support you. So this whole idea that white people are... So no, they're not. Because they actually support you. Because you are the mainstream opinion. I'm like the not so mainstream opinion about your movement. So... You guys are actually pretty much entitled to think that nobody is actually talking about you when in fact everybody supports you. You guys are not the underdog. You guys are not the victims. So please stop painting this picture that you guys are in fact not being listened to because clearly it's the reality that you guys are in fact being listened to. All the incidents we have had with black people dying there have been other officers, other white people standing at the sides watching it happen. Why? Why couldn't they have just said, stop, man, stop? Why was that so hard? Look, your example about police brutality, how people who are police officers just hurt people and they don't do nothing while they just stand by. It's true and it's also a really sad reality that it happens to so many people in the black community. I totally understand your point and I also agree that it's absolutely wrong. However, I don't think it's just solely for just black people because we know for a fact that of course there are some cases of white people also being a target of brutality and the police don't do anything about it. The most recent example I can think of right now was when the protesters happened, of course, in some place, I forgot the place, and there was like this one old white guy. And so what happened was that he was pushed down and of course he probably cracked his skull or whatever. And he was also bleeding because of the, because of the concrete. And of course, the police officer didn't stop and check on him. Everybody else surrounding him did not stop and check on him. And so this is not something that is exclusive to black people. That's what I'm trying to say. That like police brutality, to me at least, is something of a human rights issue. Not a black issue, not a white issue. It all comes down to a human rights issue. It's not just black lives matter, white lives matter. It's pretty much to me, all the lives around me. They all matter, regardless of your circumstance, regardless of your class, regardless of what kind of skin color you are. I'm a new mother, and this has been uh, particularly difficult and painful. So I look at my son and I see Tamir Rice. I look at my son and I see Trayvon Martin. When I see people choosing, because they have the privilege to, choose to ignore our pain and our fear and the fact that it feels like half the time we are screaming into a void and that people are not listening because it makes them uncomfortable. When I see that, I want to show them a picture of my happy child and say, George Floyd was that child. Tamir Rice was that child, et cetera, et cetera. Breonna Taylor was that child. That is someone's child. And so the very least you can do is acknowledge the pain. The very least you can do is hear us. I could definitely sympathize with that point, mostly because I cannot imagine being a dad 
and hearing the news that my son or daughter was the victim of police brutality. I can totally understand where you come from because ultimately it affects everybody in the family. It affects the mom, it affects the dad, it affects the aunt, uncle, and every part of the family. It's completely sad to lose a life, especially life that is actually so young that they have much more inventions in the future to actually accomplish. It's quite sad. But don't you also think that when a white person who have news of their son or daughter being the victim of police brutality, don't you not think that they also feel sad to hear about that news, to hear about that sad instance? Don't you think they also want to have justice for their son, that they want justice for their daughter? So it's not just necessarily a black issue when it comes down to your son or your daughter being murdered. To me, it comes down to a complete corruption issue. It's universal towards all the races, towards all Americans. And so that's why we have to focus on everybody because in order for all lives to matter, we have to focus on everybody and not just one person. Fear drives everything or prevents everything. People are afraid of saying the wrong thing. People are afraid of how they're going to appear. It's almost as if political correctness is actually a real thing. We need white people to engage critically, honestly, repeatedly, thoroughly in the dismantling of racial hierarchy and white supremacy in this country uh, because they're part of it. I'm very much curious on how we have a white supremacist society, mostly because if a white supremacist society actually exists in our country, why is it that so many corporations, why is it so many celebrities, why is it that so many people end up supporting your movement for your cause? If it's really a big issue, why is there so many games like Wolfenstein which encourage people to shoot Nazis? Why is it there are so many history classes that actually, of course, shows the horror of the Holocaust, of the Nazi regime? Why is there so many textbooks talking about the horrors of slavery? If we really, really, in fact, endorse this kind of idea of white supremacy, I'm sorry, I, don't, can, I cannot find any examples of our society would actually do that. And matter of fact, if we really, really, really want to have white supremacy, why is it that we have a president for like two terms, eight years in total, in office before Donald Trump? I'm kind of curious, what kind of white society allow a black president to have leadership of our nation? These are just the highlights that I wanted to respond to for this video. Again, see the entire video that I responded to and a link in the comment section down below. And, I, and as always, of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.